people are drawn to books, drawn to movies, drawn to stories because they want to see their values in life reflected. They want to see the things that matter to them. Uh, the same kind of struggles that they're having brought to fruition. They want to see their values triumph. They want to see the things that matter to them work out in the end. They want, you know, if, in, in the most simple terms, you might say a love story. Um, people naturally seek love in their lives. It's one of the greatest things about life. So when you're reading a love story, you're watching those things that matter to you in conflict and seeing how they're resolved. So in this condensed little form of a story, you get to see this whole thing played out that you, um, that, that interests you and has meaning in your own life. Stories do that for us. They bring broad concepts, broad abstracts down to specific examples that we can understand in a, in a timely condensed form and make it more real to us. They make those values have meaning to our own lives. And you can take those stories into your own life and you can say, well, I want to be like that. I want to be the best person I can be. And that's to me one of the things I'm most proud of about these stories is that they make readers feel that way, is they make them want to live up to their best in, in life, make them want to be the best person they can be. Philosophy and storytelling are all one and the same. Throughout time, all storytelling has been philosophy passed down. I just happen to like to deliver my philosophy at Sword Point. Along the way as I've written this series, um, a number of people have been interested in the film rights and have approached us all the time. Um, one of the problems I always had with doing any film of this series or of Wizard's First Rule is that it's a grand, sweeping, epic story. And when you try to cut a film down to a two-hour movie, it, it really guts what the story is about. Because without all the, the detail, you don't see the importance of these people and of this grand, epic tale. Um, Sam Raimi approached us uh, and he had an idea to make this in a long format in order to do it justice. Sam is a real fan of the series. He loves Richard Kane and loves the story. And he's a storyteller too. And he understands my feelings about wanting to keep the story whole and in context. And, and he shares the, that excitement. And I'm really excited about him being able to do this. And, um, it's a dream come true for me to have it be on film. At the same time, it's kind of scary because these people in the story all live in my head at the moment. And when they finally come out on film, um, it's, uh, it's like seeing the birth of your children. There are other stories within this world that I'd like to tell. You know, in a way, the Sword of Truth series is a prologue to what comes after. So this is a beginning point, not an ending point for me. This now gives me the ability to expand all these stories out and to show where they all go. So it's a very exciting time for me. One of the things that surprised me was the way the books have spread throughout the world. But I never realized how it would touch the lives of people, how it would connect to their life, and, and how it would bring meaning to their life. And I've heard so many stories from so many people all over the world about what the books have meant to them and how it's enriched their life. The sort of truth world, the, the world that I've written down, has opened up my world to a greater world. It's you know, brought me out of my little room where I'm writing the story to have friends everywhere and have connections with people everywhere. And it's been the greatest experience of my life. And I want to thank you for reading the series and supporting me and recommending it to friends. Um, it's, it's all possible because of you, and, and I appreciate every, each and every one of you, so thank you.